So welcome, Norma. I, under I understand that you um, have experienced one of what, what we call our impossible healings having to do with atrial fibrillation in the heart. Yes? Yes, I believe so. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, why don't we talk first about when it started, you know, what your symptoms were, how often it occurred, you know, what, what happened with you and all of that before our little magic happened. Go ahead. Well, about three years ago in a routine pre-op uh, EKG, I guess they do that before you have surgery, they discovered that I had atrial fibrillation, which was a shock to me. I've always been a very healthy person. Um, and everybody went into a panic mode. Oh, we cannot do the surgery. You can't do, oh, you have AFib. You got to go do this. You got to go see a cardiologist. So reluctantly, I went to see a cardiologist. I really liked him. He didn't try to scare me too much. He explained to me <laughs> the risks and uh, what he was recommending. Um, and at that time, I, uh, I decided to not do a whole lot about it. Uh, I started taking a beta blocker. He was concerned about uh, the rapid heartbeat, um, but it was making me feel worse. So I stopped. And I did notice a drop in energy level, uh, but I thought, well, maybe I'm recovering from the surgery or, you know, whatever. I was attributing it to different things. Uh, and then in August of last year, so it's 13 months ago. I woke up one morning and I could feel my heart jumping out of my chest. I could, like, I, I got scared. I thought I was having a heart attack. Um, and so I made another appointment with my cardiologist. And my heart rate at that point, my resting heart rate was 130 something, which I think it's supposed to be below 100 or something. Um, well it's supposed to be like 60 or something yeah. like that. <laughs> well, that made him nervous. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, just 130 is the kind of, of pulse rate I get when I go off running for half an hour, okay? That's what he said. He said, it's like you're running a marathon continuously. That's, that's why you're tired, <laughs> not feeling well. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> he says, we need to get that down. You can't, we can't keep that. So he gives me a beta blocker. And he gives me um, a blood thinner, which I was really reluctant to take, but I thought I also don't want to have a stroke. So um, I, I better take it. And so I started taking that. And we were able to get the heart rate down to a manageable level. Between He said that for my age, which I'll be 66 in November, um, he said for, so at that time I was 64. Yeah. Uh, he said that for my age, a person with AFib, he likes to see it under 100, between 80 and 100. And so I managed to get it down to that level. And little by little, I weaned myself off of the beta blocker because it, it was ho horrible. Um, but I had no energy level. It was in the meantime, I had another surgery. I had and I was attributing it to the surgery, but no energy level like um, I couldn't climb stairs. If I went to pick something up off the floor, it took me time to recover my breath. My youngest daughter came to visit. She lives out of town. She continuously asked, are you okay? Because if we walked even mildly uphill, I'd be wheezing, you know? To me, it became normal. It was like, this is who I am now, right? Yes. And at some point, I participated in some uh, OEFT practice groups. And at some point, in the last few months, I decided I'm going to focus on my AFib. You know, I, I want to, yeah, what? what? Are you going to say something? I just want to interject for a second. For those listening in, OEFT stands for Optimal EFT, and it's a practice group. You're one of our members in our membership, and part of that privilege is there is you get together with other people like once a week uh -huh. uh, at your option, and you do, you do, um, Optimal EFT Unseen Therapist Sessions for various yes. members, for yourselves. And you ended up, I'm kind of fast forwarding here a little bit. You ended up, if I understand the story right, having a session where people were in your group working with you, Unseen Therapist. And all of a sudden, it was like a night and day bingo type yes. 
wow, it went away kind of thing. Yes, I want to, I want to uh, clarify that I had been working on the um, AFib either directly as the focus person or in the background. We were working with others for maybe a month or six weeks. But this uh -huh. was a breakthrough moment because at the end of the session, I went from having zero energy to feeling fine, taking my, uh, an AFib reading on my Apple Watch and having it be normal for the first time in three years. I mean, prior to that, my daughter's a nurse. If anytime she took my pulse, was, yep, you're an AFib. Anytime I went to a doctor's appointment, yep, you're an AFib. Uh, if I took my blood pressure, yep, you're an AFib. It was constant. It was like never not in AFib. Yeah. Yeah, and if I, if I understand it right, this, I don't know what this Apple thing is, but it's a, it's a, it's a AFib Watch. detection thing. But yeah. you were doing that almost daily. And so you were having AFib, you had evidence of AFib yep. daily. Yep. Yep. Okay. Right. I was Go also ahead. participating, you know, I live in Michigan and I was a subject in an experiment. That's why I had the Apple Watch. The University of Michigan, you know, asks you to be a volunteer and they give you benefits. Like they gave me this free Apple Watch. And for three weeks, I had to take my blood pressure twice a day as part of that study. And yeah. every time I took my blood pressure, it says irregular heartbeat detected, probably a sign of AFib. So, I mean, it was very, very consistent, right? Yeah, right. Suddenly, okay. not only was it gone, but my energy was back. You know, I was like, oh, wow, I can like function today. Um, so much so that I, uh, I have a foot injury. So I went to the doctor about it to make sure it wasn't broken. And that's when he confirmed, oh, no, there's no AFib. I finally realized my foot injury is because I haven't been able to walk for over a year. And now it was like, oh, I could walk. And I overdid it. And so I think I sprained my foot is what I did. Okay. <laughs> well, okay. So, so you had all this evidence, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, okay, all of a sudden you could feel the AFib going. I mean, that's my, my term, but it was... Like you could feel it, and here's this energy, and it was like mm -hmm. a light switch. Now, for those listening in, we get results like this is one of our impossible healings. That is, uh, this is be typically beyond the reach of all you know man-made methods. Um, there are, there are. Um, I forgot. I looked it up today on the internet. I'm looking at the Heart Association, um, and they were talking about cures. But one of those cures. Well, I'm not sure there's a cure, but they were using the term cure. It's like a temporary cure. We'll get it for now, mm -hmm. kind of thing. It's called ablation, and you're familiar with that. What, is, what does that amount to? Well, they sedate you, and they hook you up to electrodes, and they shock your hearts. It's not very different from what you see on Grey's Anatomy, but without the paddles, with electrodes. Mm -hmm. What they did for me uh, was not quite an ablation. It was called a cardioversion. It's a milder form of that, but basically the same principle, and it worked for 12 hours. And as yeah. I told you, I had burns all over my skin from the electrodes. Um, it was expensive and 12 hours. And then I was back. So for those 12 hours, I noticed I went to pick up something off the floor and I wasn't out of breath. I could walk upstairs without feeling like I got, okay, I need to sit down and recover. <laughs> you know? okay. So this happened, this light switch, voila, AFib gone thing happened six weeks ago, if I understand right. And you haven't had any signs in your Apple Watch or anything else since, and your energy's been way up since, yes? Yes, yeah, it, to me, it's a miracle. Uh, oh. I know that, it, I mean, I, I understand that maybe another aspect could come up and I'll be back, to, but for now, it's unbelievable. Well, yeah, so we got, we got six weeks at last, but. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Even if I'd had one day, I would have thought, wow, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, okay, all right, great. And we are, we are visiting right now, and you are at the end of your day in Michigan. It's at like 6 or 6.30 or thereabouts there. Mm -hmm. And today you've had a busy day, including this afternoon, four full therapy sessions with clients. Am I correct? Yes, and I go into their homes, so it takes a time. You know, I got to drive there. I have to. I visit with them, then I leave, yeah. That's the kind of thing that would tend to uh, uh, soak up the energy of almost anyone. <laughs> Any 66-year-old, yeah. <laughs> well, 
<laughs> I think I think a forty six year old would uh, at the end of the day go, uh, you yeah. know, <laughs> because some of these sessions get really intense. They get into deep stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and and it isn't some light little trip through that we're doing here. So, okay, well, anyway, I mean, so impossible healing that does not occur elsewhere. 